Okay, so let's talk about factoring. Now, factoring in algebra is probably one of the most important skills that students kind of underestimate. If you don't know how to factor, you will not be successful in algebra. And factoring really starts uh, with learning how to factor out the greatest common factor. So we're going to go ahead and practice how to factor the greatest common factor with this particular problem. Now, I'm just curious, uh, how many out there can do this problem? So if you can do this, go ahead and pause the video and write this down, and you will uh, should be able to do this in about 15 seconds. But uh, put into the comment section, have you uh, had uh, difficulty with factoring? Okay, so it's not uncommon for students to have trouble with factoring. If you are experiencing uh, issues with factoring, put those uh, into the comment section. Or maybe you can say, no, I learned factoring. I'm an expert at it. Whatever the case is, tell me how it's going with factoring. So we're going to get into uh, how to factor out the GCF. And we're going to do this prom. And we're going to start off with a basic prom here in just one second. But let me just make sure... That you uh, to tell you that even if you know how to do this problem, you need to practice uh, factoring as much as you possibly can because it is a skill, and like any skill, the more you do it, the better you're going to be at it. But we're going to get into all of this in just one second. Uh, but uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you are having a tough time in math, maybe you failed math before, maybe you're struggling with math right now, it doesn't have to be that way, okay? So maybe you're not getting enough math instruction, or maybe you're not uh, connecting with your teacher's teaching style. Whatever the case might be, I can help you out. I've been teaching math for decades, and um, although I teach math, I like to uh, prefer... Uh, to believe that I explain math, okay? I really break things down in super clear and understandable bite-sized pieces so everyone can be successful in mathematics and everyone can be. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, you definitely want to check out my math help program. Now, if you're preparing for any test that has a math section on it, and there's a lot of tests out there, Things uh, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, CLEP exam, ACUPLACE, or ALEX exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you definitely have to check out my homeschool math courses. We were just recently voted um, nationally uh, for number one in middle and high school math. Okay, uh, There was a particular contest, uh, with, and we're going to be making this announcement, so I'm kind of being vague about it right now, but uh, we were voted winners over thousands of votes, so we're really happy about that. So definitely check out our homeschool math courses and curriculum. And if you don't have any math notes, well, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video as well. But if you want to be great in math and get outstanding math grades, you have to learn how to take great math notes. Okay, so start improving your notes and everything will get better. Okay, so let's get into this. Uh, again, if you think you could do this problem, go ahead and pause the video and do this. But uh, let's go down here and talk about the GCF. Now, uh, you can see here, I'm going to be explaining it and um, how to factor. We're going to uh, start off with a basic problem here. <clears throat> excuse, excuse my uh, voice. I'm a little crackly today. I think I'm still uh, dealing with some allergies, but uh, that's not going to stop me from teaching you mathematics. But let's go ahead and quickly review something. Let's say I have three times two y plus five. Okay, so. If I said multiply this, you would be using the distributive property. You would take this 3, and you would multiply it by each one of these terms. So we would get 6y, 3 times 2y, 6y, plus 3 times 5, which, of course, is 15. Okay. Now, I'm bringing this up because this is important for us to understand. So this way, we just multiplied. We took these factors. This is a factor, and this is a factor, and we multiplied and this was the answer. Well, what we're going to be doing by factoring out the GCF is doing this in reverse. Okay, this is like our problem. And the question is to factor 6y plus 15. Okay, now when you're doing that, you're going to be factoring out uh, the greatest common factor in this kind of case. And the greatest common factor here is 3. Okay, this would be the GCF. And then we have 2y plus 5. Okay, so this is the greatest common factor. This is a factor, and this is a factor, because when we multiply this and this, okay, uh, we get this product. Okay, so uh, 3 and 2y plus 5 are the factors of 6y plus 15. So we want to make sure we understand this. But the uh, main idea here is that 
you're doing the distributor property in reverse when you're factoring out the GCF. Okay, so you can't learn how to factor the GCF or um, uh, more sophisticated factoring methods unless you get that distributor property down. Now, of course, if you have any uh, difficulty with the distributor property or anything like that, I have tons of videos on uh, all these topics on my uh, YouTube channel, my, my pre-algebra and my algebra playlist. But if you really want to master this stuff, you want to check out one of my algebra courses. Okay, so let's get into it. So we have 4x squared plus 10x. We're going to uh, start off with this. And we want to uh, factor out or factor this. Okay, we want to factor this. Now, the way this is going to look is, again, we're going to have the GCF. And then we're going to have uh, parentheses. And then right here, because this is an addition problem, we're going to have an addition term right there. And so this will be... The factors. Okay, but let's take a look at how we do this. All right, so what you want to do is you want to look at each one of these terms and you want to break down these respective terms in their prime, uh, into their prime factors. So we have 4x squared. So let's just factor this as, as far as we possibly can. So 4 is the same thing as 2 times 2 times x times x. That's x squared. And then 10 is the same thing as 2 times 5 times x. So we have each one of these terms uh, all broken down in the respective prime factors. So now let's take a look at what's common, all right? Let's talk about the GCF. What is? What are the common factors, okay? Well, uh, between here and here, let's see here. They have a 2 in common. This has a 2 and this has a 2. Now, this has two 2s, but they only have one 2 in common, okay? Uh, and then let's see what else do they have in common. Well, this has an X and this has an X as well. Although this has two X's, they only have one X in common. So this is how you determine what the GCF is. You just kind of look at the prime factors and look at uh, how many of these factors they have in common. And then you just pull this together into one factor. So 2X, this has a 2, this has an X, this has a 2, and this has an X. So 2X is in fact the greatest common factor. Okay, so when it comes to this particular problem, 2x is the greatest common factor, but we want to factor this. Okay, so we're factoring out the GCF, right? So again, this is the GCF. So how do we know what's going to be in uh, the parentheses right here? Well, this is really easy, okay? Let's take a look at what's remaining. Well, we have a 2x remaining right here, so that's where we're going to, we're going to put a 2x right inside our parentheses, okay? This is an addition problem, so this is going to be a plus sign. And then what's remaining over here? Well, we took a 2x out. There's a 5 remaining, so we'll put a 5 right there. And that is it, okay? So we just factored 4x squared plus 10x, and it's equal to 2x times uh, 2x plus 5, okay? Now, 2x is the GCF, and if I was to multiply this times this, 2x times 2x gives me back to uh, 4x squared, and then 2x times 5 gets me back to 10x. Okay, so if you understand that, then I think you'll be good to go on our uh, next problem, which is the problem that we were looking at uh, initially. So let's go ahead and tackle that now. Now, if you I kind of have all the factors written out. So if you want to just uh, work on this for a second uh, using the procedure I just told you, then this should be pretty easy. So let's take a look at the terms. We have 12. Uh, z to the fourth, okay, uh, then we have 8z squared, and then we have a 6z. So 12z to the fourth, we look at the prime factors of 12, uh, that's going to be what, 6 times 2 or 4 times 3, which will be 4, it's the same thing as uh, 2 times 2 times 3, okay, so this, this is the prime factors of 12 times z to the fourth, so that's 4z's, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 8 is uh, 2 times 2 times 2. These are the prime factors of 8 uh, times z squared, which is z and z. And then 6 is just 2 times 3 times a z. Okay, so let's go ahead and start circling what these guys have in common. Let's start with the 6z. Let's just focus on the numbers. So we have a 2 here, okay? 1, 2. So I'm like, okay, this has a bunch of 2s. We, we, this has a 2 in common, and I know I have a 2 over here. So... Each one of these terms has a 2 in common. Even though this has a 2 and this has more 2s, it doesn't make a difference. They only have one 2 in common. Okay, what else do they have in common? Well, let's take a look. Looks like they have uh, a Z right here. I have a Z. I know I have a Z here, and I have a Z here. Okay. Now, 
I think um, uh, this is all they have in common, but I'm like, wait a minute, I saw a three over here, and I see a three here. Oh, they have a three in common. Well, not so quick. It, does this uh, term right here have a three? No, it does not. So guess what? They all have to have the same number in common. So all they have in common is a 2z. Here's a 2z and here's a 2z. So you uh, guessed it, 2z is our greatest common factor. So let's actually write that right here. Okay, so if I said, what is the greatest common factor? You would say 2z, but let's go ahead and actually factor this out. So what is remaining? Well, this is what's remaining in this first term. So that's two times three. We can write that as six, and then uh, three z, so that'd be z cubed, okay? Now this is addition, so we'll put plus right here. And then what's remaining right here? I have two times two times z, which is uh, two times two is four, so that's four z. And then here, this is a minus sign, so I gotta put this, put a little subtraction sign right there. And then what's remaining with our last term, there's just a three remaining. Okay, so this, these are the factors of this polynomial right here, and 2z is the GCF. So let's just go ahead and check our work. If I was to apply the distributive property, I would have 2z. If I multiply by here, okay, I should get back to this 12z to the fourth. 2z times 6z cubed is, in fact, 12z to the fourth. Now let's check this second term. 2z times um, 4z should give me, what, 8z squared. So that works out. Now remember, I have a subtraction sign here. So 2z times uh, 3 gets me back to 6z. Okay, and that is it. Okay, so if you understand this, if you got this right, matter of fact, let me go ahead and give you a nice happy face with the good old 1986 flat top haircut. That was a good year. Matter of fact, I'll give you an A plus and 100%. I don't know what you're doing, but it seems like you understand factoring. Maybe you've been following that guy on YouTube uh, that teaches math. I don't know, but anyways, a nice job. Now, if you were confused about this, but you understand this, well, guess what? That makes me very happy as well. And uh, you should be happy about this because factoring is probably, again, one of these, probably the number one skill that uh, students, uh, that sync students in algebra. They just struggle with factoring. In fact, as the more you progress in algebra, the more you use factoring. You've got to know how to factoring. <clears throat> you got to know how to factor, excuse me. And it all starts with understanding the GCF. So hopefully this uh, video helped you out. And if that is the case, help me out by smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math to advanced math, like calculus, and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my content. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.